Hello, welcome to Reality TV. I'm Raymond Lucari, and today I'm joined by Oscar Vargas, who is running in the Providence City Council Ward 15 special election to replace Council President Matos, who represented Ward 15 before she was appointed Lieutenant Governor by Governor McKee. Mr. Vargas, how are you today? Pretty good. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for the invitation to be in this great program. And let's get started. And I'm very excited to, to be be interviewed by, by you though. Thank you. No problem. And it's a pleasure of mine to have you on the show. Just diving right into it, right, diving right into it here. Mr. Vargas, what made you want to run for city council and why are you the best to represent the ward? I got a passion. I got a passion for the community where I call home. This is my home community. I've been in Providence more than 20 years and special in this district, District 15. It is where I call home and I'm glad to, to be running and to represent the community to do a great job and to get this war on the map. And, and like I say, it's, 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 I'm glad to be running for city council and that's my passion to give back to the community. And this isn't actually the first time you had ran for this uh, for this in this ward. You had run for the same seat back in 2018 and did good versus a well-funded incumbent, which was Council President Matos. Are there any key differences you see with this campaign versus that other one in 2018? Uh, yes, it's a key difference. It got me by surprise because I was getting ready for run a next year because she was term limit. I say, well, okay, I was going to prepare my my path, I was talking with people, say, look, I'll be running next year, but this got me by surprise. So this is the opportunity for me to jump in the wagon and 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 help the people and try to finish what she start because I know she has a lot of projects going on and I'd be glad to finish it because it's 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 it's, it's projects that will benefit our community, our district 15. That's why that's a different, it's, it's a surprise for me, but uh, I'm glad that people is supporting me and I ask everybody to support me and, and I'll be working for you guys. And there were a lot of different issues to be focused on in 2018 versus now in 2021. What are some of the key issues you plan to focus on in this campaign and what have been some of the things you've heard from the residents here in Ward 15? So far, I've been hearing a lot. Number one is speeding. They, they, they complain about speeding, 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 speeding. And we have a lot of children in our community. So we need to be focused on, on the speeding. I'll be working on the speed bumps and I'll be working to clean the sidewalks, to clean the streets and to pick up the trash because it's a huge problem we have with trash. Our street need to be sweep at least three times a year and we have a bunch of mattresses in every corner that you see, you see a mattress. So I, I got a great idea that is going to be, I will present it to the, to the city council. When, I, when you people elect me, I will present this plan to have a better view and, and start working in this project. Then by doing this, we're going to avoid the rodent problem that we have in our city, especially in our community. That's one issue, a huge issue that we have so far. And I'm focusing on some of the issues that are facing the ward. You had mentioned in your uh, press release that you're a small business owner in Oneyville. And one of the biggest issues on business owners' minds right now is the push to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. As a small business owner yourself, where do you stand on if Rhode Island should raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour or not? I stand positive to raise the minimum wage, but they already passed the, the legislation for $15 an hour, the Senate passed it. So it's, it's a process that will take like at least a year to hit the, the margin, $15 uh, per hour, but I am positive and I'm okay to, to raise the minimum wage. You have uh, mentioned you'll advocate for a better investment in what you call our broken education system. The province public schools were failing for years and it had required a state takeover. Now there is a pushback to end it after about one year of it being in the state's control. Um, if it were up to you, what could be done to fix the province public school system? We know that we have a broken system, but between the two departments, like a shot and public, we have to find a balance. We have to find a balance and, and, and work together without hurting no one. 
because I understand that out of my district, a lot of kids goes to charter school, but also a lot of kids goes to public school. But we have to work together mm -hmm. to, to get a better education for everyone because we have, and we want a bright future. I want a bright future for my kids. I got two kids in, in public school. I got Christopher and Daniel. They great students and great schools. It's a great system. And I'm going to be working very hard to, to find a solution. And you had mentioned scar uh, you had mentioned charter schools in that uh, answer. One of the two ideas that get floated around by more Republicans are school choice and expansion of charter schools. Where do you stand on school choice and the expansion of charter schools? Like I said before, we need to find out a balance, how we can get more money to support the school system. Then when I get elected like a city council, I'd be glad to sit down with, with the, the person who's in charge of the finance to see how we can help both systems without hurting the taxpayers. And now moving on to another issue that you briefly had mentioned at the top of the interview, you also highlighted that you want to fix the sidewalks, streets, and uh, blighted properties. How would you be able to get that done in the city council? Every year we get a budget. We get some money to fix up sidewalks and to fix up the street. I'll be asking for more funds to fix up our broken sidewalks and to fix our streets. And that's my number one issue because every single street you walk has a broken sidewalk. And from the last 10 years, they've been fixing sidewalk, but they're, they're not fit like a long side. They fit one little sidewalk here, another sidewalk there, and then they leave the worst one in the middle. I know the city already sent somebody to, to take measures and, and photographs all the sidewalks on the neighborhood. So they have this in record. When I get elected, I'll be asking for those records and start working as soon as possible to fix up the sidewalks. You're looking to, so you're looking to implement uh, money in the budget to fix that problem? That's correct. And um, right uh, as of right now, the city council, how it's gonna look with the composition is up in the air. After the 2022 election, it will look differently. It, look, it will look a lot differently. A number of city council members are term limited and there will definitely be, be a new city council president. There might even be um, a vote on the, the temporary city council president possibly by the time you're elected. So just out of curiosity, if elected out of the people on the city council right now, who would you be uh, in favor to have as council president and why? And when my constituents and my friends and my neighborhoods elect me as a city council, I'll be talking with the city council body. I will talk to everyone and I will see what, what issues and what um, benefits they have for my district. And I will see what they think about my district and, and, and how we can work together. So it's where I'm going to make the decision. If I had to make a decision to vote for a, 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 a city council president is when I'm going to make the decision. And uh, shifting to the non-political topic, my, uh, my final question is one that I ask everyone on the show to keep tradition. And that is, in your opinion, what do you think Rhode Island is best known for? Rhode Island is best known for the waterfronts, that's one. Second is the wildfire. Third is Federal Hill. Federal Hill is very famous. And last, City of Providence. City of Providence is, is what I call home. And is very popular. It's full of, of, of um, diversity people that I love. And that's why we call the city the shiny star. And that's what Rhode Island is best for, you know? And I, I, like I said, Rhode Island is, is my home. It's my, where I've been, I, I got married here. I got my family here. I raised my kids here. I'm raising my kids in here in the state of Rhode Island. I don't know any other state. Yes, that's Rhode Island. And you had mentioned uh, Federal Hill. Do you have a specific place you like to eat at Federal Hill? Oh yes, I go to the cantina restaurant. I go, it's a uh, several Mexican restaurants in there. Pretty good, and I, I love the Italian food too. I go to Italian restaurants too. Like I go like once a month with my wife and my family. And now that they close uh, the mayor 
uh, was a big news that he's going to close Federal Hill like uh, every weekend for the customers to go and enjoy family, enjoy the family restaurants at Federal Hill. And you had mentioned Italian food. Have you ever tried Caserta's out of curiosity? It's a really good place. It is. I have had tried. I remember once when I when I used to go to Mount Carmel Church on Fera Hill. After the, the church, we, we used to go to Caseras restaurant. It's a great pizza. Very great. It really is. And it's probably one of the best in the whole state, in my humble opinion. And uh, I'm glad that you agree with that. Uh, thank yeah, you, Mr. And thank, thank you so much for coming on the show, Mr. Vargas. It's been a pleasure of mine to have you on. And thank you once again for watching this episode of Reality TV. If you want to see future episodes as soon as they're posted on this channel, please click the subscribe button down below along with the post notification bell icon to the right of it. Or if you want to read future political profiles articles, please visit anchorweb.org. I'm Raymond Bakari, and I'll see you on the next episode.